this the, mask. This mask, yeah. Uh, this mask, can you see it? Yeah, yeah uh, this mask, uh, I kept it because that's the first, first mask uh, I own. My dad uh, bought this present to me and it was, at the time, uh, a pretty expensive present for the, a kid. And uh, I, uh, yeah, I, I just love this mask uh, and, and kept it since I was 15. As I came to Australia in 92, uh, I could not speak English well, not even now, but uh, not at all. And uh, the, the way for me to integrate to the society or to have uh, an activity wa was fencing. And frankly, I didn't even know I could fence in Australia. It wasn't in my uh, imagination to fence. Fencer was uh, fencing in Australia. I mean, I didn't bring my gear, uh, but when I uh, ran into a, a local club in the neighborhood, Camp Hill, uh, just by driving past, I saw this little koala with a fencing mask. I went, whoa. If that's fencing, what's the story about koala fencing, you know? And I went to check and, and there uh, I met uh, uh, the Gary Walsfield and at the time Paul Cook was fencing too uh, there and, and all the, the young ones. And uh, yeah, I got my gear back from France and I started to, to fence and meet good friends in fencing there and they were very open to to contact and uh, interact with me and and speak with me because of the sport and the kind of camaraderie or the fraternity of fencing really make me feel welcome in the club and in the sport and very quickly I uh, I went back into fencing more often as a social uh, as a social uh, activity. Uh, I, um, I went to uh, this competition in, in Canberra in, in 93 on the Australia Day and uh, I won the competition, the national competition, my first one ever in Australia. I just wanted to go and, and fence and, and fence hard. And I, and I won the competition. That means that was first uh, try, like a success. And first gold medal, I didn't see the, the next gold medal after many years after that. Because usually any competition I went to, they, they were ready for me and, and, and uh, it was harder to, to perform. Uh, I kind of a fluke, the first one. My, my first uh, Australian team was for Kuala Lumpur, a Commonwealth game. And, um, and they uh, did a, a poor performance in individual. Maybe gave me some more warmth to go into the team. And in the team, a miracle happened. Great team, uh, Scott Arnold. Seamus Robinson, uh, Simon Weymouth, awesome fencer, and Carl Oberg, that was uh, our team. And, and um, seeing our position before the second last match, he was looking like no hope. Uh, Simon Weymouth told um, the, the coach, our coach, to do a substitution because he knew the fence had to come and he, he could not see him uh, uh, taking the score back against this fencer. Not that he, was, he wasn't uh, stronger than him, but he was, he, he was too many points to catch up. That means he said, let's, let's gamble this and put Luke on. I, I don't remember the... The, the numbers were kind of like seven points and something like that. And yeah, and giving the last point, that's when our team were 40. 
and they were 39. Uh, Scott Arnold was saying uh, after Seamus was fencing the last match, he, he said to all the us, the teammates, he said if you happen we win, we all go and jump in the swimming pool, like all in white, jumping in the swimming pool. And it, it, it did happen uh, after like amazing fencing from Seamus. And, and we all went and dive in, in the swimming pool. And the, the, the swimming pool master was like, could not believe. He, he, he loved his pool so much, he, he could not believe we were just going, running, all dressed and diving in his pool. I think that, that's a, a good, uh, good memory with uh, Kuala Lumpur. But um, yeah, and this one, that's the one we fence with at the Olympic, because uh, at the time they were pushing for the clear mask, for changing the, and, and now they, they give up on, on, on this clear mask. But uh, I got pictures of, of uh, the Olympic, where you can really see the eyes, the intensity in the eyes, and uh, it's, it's a shame they didn't keep this, uh, this clear mask. When the Olympic year comes, they, you go into the qualifying competition to make points and with all the disasters happened for all the fences too, didn't qualify. I, I was just on the edge, on the edge of, uh, of making it. Uh, that means they kept me as a reserve. Uh, and I, I, it was one of the stressors time uh, uh, to just to qualify after selection, when the, our federation selected the team, I uh, I uh, appeal against the decision, and my lawyer uh, Cecil Walters at the time, before she married, uh, she she knew that the only way for me to, to take a spot in the Australian team was to go against uh, one of my teammates, uh, dear teammates, Jerry Adams, um, because the technicality of uh, uh, the, the, the way the rules were, were made, it was my only chance to, uh, to appeal. Van, Van, uh, Jerry and, and Nick Effenen were my team, and we we friends as a team, and we we just we were we were the team, and like, that's the team fence at the team events in the end. But uh, I mean that was hard for me to go against a teammate, but that was my only chance to, to make up the the individual, and the the all the fans uh, made the individual. Uh, uh, I could not. I could not um, uh, technically. I could not uh, try to take him, take his position. I did in the end. I did fence, and we had success, beating China, first match, putting us in the top top eight. I mean, all this is just success. Um, but the meaning of being an Olympian uh, as, as such, I don't know if it's that, I don't use it. You know, hardly anyone knows it. You know? uh, uh, but uh, I think more, more, more importantly, to be an Olympian, what's important, I think it's because we've been reaching for the perfection as as a sport, as a training, as being the best as you can be physically and mentally and in your technique and all that means you your inspiration is to go towards perfection. What I got from 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 this uh, desire of perfection is bleed into anything you do because that's the way you learn to achieve. To achieve, you have to be the best, 
and, and work hard for that. It can be in any other, other field, like uh, in, in professional work, same. You, you, everything you do, you try your best and, and you're working hard for it. And I think that's what, that's what I think I, I'm, I'm glad that I, uh, I, um, I succeed. Not when if I didn't succeed, but still tried hard. Not succeeding will, uh, will uh, not make me approach life the same way. But it's, it's kind of like something I, I'm, I'm stuck to now. I have to always uh, excel in what I do. Well, let's uh, I'm always going to be a good uh, fly catcher. I'm not joking. Uh, said maybe it's a joke, but the the fact that you come to Australia, you got all so many flies. It's a good exercise as a fencer to just catch them and not shoot them. No, and they again, you're trying, you're trying to do something, and 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 instead of shooing, it's not trying. It's you just pushing it away, there you're trying to catch it. And anyway, that's a, just a comma. Um, fencing, well, I mean, the, 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 brother, the brotherhood is, is like where, where you, you make friends, uh, deep friends, mates, and, and you, you've been true with them with, for me, with all the travel, travels, the competition, the stress, we've been through. Uh, but we, we stay together, uh, and I'm still close to my teammates. Uh, he lives uh, not far from me now, uh, Nick Fennell. And, and Seamus came to live uh, also in our town. That means it's, it's so good to have teammates when we had success together good times and like hard times also, but you're part of their life, they're, they're part of your life. And mostly because uh, we're living the same stories of, as a fencer. I think fencing uh, gave me a, a lot of uh, self-belief and it is, uh, can, can show in, into my life in general, like self-belief and when you can build a house, you know. You can uh, uh, always uh, try things, and, and uh, by 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 trying, you, you you got success coming. And and if if you are too shy to try them, that's where uh, you don't believe on yourself, and and nothing will happen. That's been. You have to be uh, a bit adventurous in, into this self-belief because you, it, it's no limit in, in what you can do. And not, not uh, um, being afraid of failure. To go towards your goal, uh, it, it's important also to stick to it uh, and, and uh, be patient about uh, success and, and, and it will take time and you will learn uh, uh, by your defeat and your victory. Never um, kind of give up uh, thinking it's taking too long. I'm still here like, uh, after 50 and still trying, still taking lessons because that's the way you learn.